Welcome to the new and improved Inside the Boiler Room. This podcast is now a video podcast on YouTube, along with an audio version that will be on most podcast platforms. This episode will be with one with new member, Valley Boiler, and features the Boiler Retu project in the Richmond, Virginia. Seanick and I had a great opportunity to go on the job site and see the project in action. So with that, I'm actually going to bring in Seanika. Hold on. Here she comes. Ready? There you are. Hey, Seanika. How you doing? Good. Thanks for bringing me in. Happy hey, to so be here. Hey, so we had a great opportunity down in Richmond with the guys at Valley Boiler. Why don't you, why don't you just tell what you think, what you thought about the project? You know, it was the first time I've ever been to a project where they were retubing, and it was really cool. And I'm super excited to talk some more about this today with both of them. Well, in addition to talking about the project, we're also going to talk about just why you would need a boiler retube and how it can revitalize a boiler. So um, are you ready to bring in our guests? I'm ready. Let's bring it. All right. Here they come. Here they come. They're right there. Look at that. All <laughs> right. Paul Horner. Brandon Jarrell, hey, from Valley Boiler, Boiler, welcome inside the Boiler Room. Thanks for having us. All right. Well, so th we always start any of the podcasts with just trying to get our me our listeners to know who you guys are, where you guys are from, what you're doing. So um, I will start with Brandon. I, I thought you could share like a an origin of Valley Boiler and kind of your background in the boiler industry. Yeah. So um, Brandon Gerald with Valley Boiler Mechanical out of Roanoke, Virginia, um, covering uh, uh, Southwest, Southwest Virginia, North Carolina, West Virginia. Um, we've been in business since 1998. Um, we, um, we, we specialize in a boiler room, but uh, we are full mechanical as well. Awesome. And uh, Paul, why don't you uh, talk about your background and how you connected with this guy? Well, my background started, uh, let's see, back in 1990, I originally worked at Gordon Pyatt. Gordon Pyatt built uh, industrial burners for about 50, 60 years. Um, so I started my career at Gordon Pyatt in 1990. Um, throughout the years, then I worked for Autoplane for, uh, and I ran that for about uh, Autoplane North America for about 15 years. Uh, Brandon and I, uh, we became friends, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 years ago. Uh, Brandon came to me, oh, about a year ago with a, with an opportunity that was here in Richmond to mm -hmm. purchase an existing uh, boiler service company that had been in business since 1865. Um, wow. It's a, it's a unique, it's a unique, it was, or it is, and it was a unique opportunity for both of us. Um, yeah. The company had been, as I said, had been in business since 1865 and been owned by the same family. Uh, so that, so the gentleman that we bought the company from, it was his great, great grandfather that started the company. Wow. Uh, John is 60 some years old. He was just looking to retire. So it was an opportunity for me and Brandon to join up as partners and uh, really take uh, what Ema Glocklin is, and then move it into a um, a bigger dynamic, a bigger operation. Really, is what we're looking to do. Well, you know what's interesting is there probably are still boilers out there from 1865 that need to be upgraded. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> <That might be. laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for introducing yourselves. I guess we just want to start out by saying that what a great opportunity you guys gave us when we were down in Richmond to come see a boiler retube project. You know, this was something that Seanica and I had really never witnessed. We've seen, I've seen boilers installed, you know, boy, brand new boilers rolling off the truck, but like to see something like that um, was really eye opening and really uh, amazing how you guys kind of navigate a project like that. So Brandon, why don't you start by just telling me how the project came to you guys and, and kind of how it evolved into what it was when you guys got there and started working on the project. Yeah, so um, you know we uh, we were running sales in the local downtown Richmond area. Um, our first week running sales, and we happened to uh, come across um, a pre-existing customer of E. McLaughlin and Sons. Um, at the time, they currently had a couple tubes leaking in their boiler, and they're down for summer maintenance. Um, so we took the opportunity to go over there and check it out. Um, we looked at it. We could have made temporary repairs to the boiler, um, changed out a couple of tubes, but the owner wanted to do it the right way. He wanted a total retube, and uh, we were happy to price that to him and and get the ball rolling for him. So, how does a project like this uh, 
uh, I guess, not just come together, but like this is not just a couple hours in the in the boiler room. I mean, this is like a pretty. I I didn't realize. Uh, I guess you could talk about how many tubes are actually in there, and uh, you know, we saw them. We saw, I think we saw the first couple coming out of the or the beginning of of the project, but. Like how long does a retu project like this take, and you know, and what uh, what needs to really happen to kind of get this project going? Yeah, go ahead, Paul. Well, we uh, so a, a project like this takes somewhere in the neighborhood of about three weeks, uh, and right now we're into it, into our third week. Um, the two guys that are doing this retu um, are there right now as we speak. Uh, all the tubes are out of the boiler, and today they're actually what we call stuffing tubes uh, today. So they're removed all 254 tubes out of the boiler uh, over the last two weeks, uh, cleaned up the tube sheet, uh, you clean up the insides of the boiler, um, and you prepare it for what we call, again, stuffing the tubes. So they'll stuff the tubes, and they'll roll the tubes and uh, hydro test it, close it back up, and uh, return it back to the customer. So being that we came there, uh, that I have a couple of photos here and you can see uh, in this photo, we can just chat about it for a second, that this is where he, they were pulling the tubes out of the boiler um, yes. one by one. Um, and then there's a picture here of uh, you guys were cutting around there, right? To open, to, 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 to kind of remove it, right? That is correct. We uh, flame cut all of the tubes um, and pulled them through the tube sheet. It's a pretty vigorous process with um, with a flame and being inside the boiler. Uh, these guys are these guys possess a very um, talented skill and trade. Yeah, and can we, maybe we can talk to that for just one second. Uh, this is not something that any company around the country can do, and um, I just wanted to kind of recognize that with you guys, and just uh, and maybe you can just talk to the fact that. This is not a job for any any technician or any boiler, you know, person out there. You really need to be skilled in this to to do it right. Am I right about that, Brandon? Absolutely. Um, we're we're an R stamp company as well. Where most service companies don't possess and carry an R stamp, but R stamp allows us to make code uh, repairs on a pressure vessel in accordance to the national board. Um, but this is this is a um, this is a very skilled trade. These guys are you know running torches for ten to twelve hours out of a day. Um, we are we are basically gouging the tube out of the uh, out of the vessel, and that's very uh, you got to be very meticulous about that because if you uh, you don't want to nick the tube sheet, you don't want to create any um, any fallacies within the vessel from from the repair itself. So, Paul, uh, the R stamp that you guys have, um, if somebody is coming around and saying that they can replace tube, they don't have an R stamp. That's a that's a scary thought and something that somebody needs to understand. And I'm not sure people really know, you know, out there, maybe, uh, you know, how do they know whether the company that they're dealing with really knows what they're doing? Well, anybody that possesses an R stamp will have that certificate, and right. that also can be looked up on the uh, on the uh, national board website, and that can okay. be verified whether they uh, that particular uh, service company holds an R stamp and is qualified to do that type of work. Got it. Got it. Shawnika, I think you have a question. Yeah. Um, how does a tube actually get compromised? What, like, uh, for example, like. How does a tube leak or, hmm. or how does somebody know when they're operating a boiler that's really happening or it's getting clogged or, right. you know, I'm just, we're just kind of wondering, like, like, how does all this happen? And how do they know it's time to retube? So one of the number one reasons that we see in uh, Virginia is uh, we, we deal with pretty hard water um, mm -hmm. and, you know, um, a scaling of the tube can create, um, you know, fouled tubes. Um, I think I read a uh, I read a article the other day where I think a, qu a quarter inch of scale re will reduce the efficiency of a boiler by over 20 percent. Wow. Um, so, you know, it, it really goes back to water, um, what your what your water quality is. And if you have bad water quality, how you're properly treating the water. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, you do have a little bit of thermal expansion and contraction of the tubes, which would create um, split ends and uh, leaks at that point. 
Um, this was not particularly that case. Uh, okay. This is a um, hot water system. Mm -hmm. um, the tubes are uh, simply rolled in, but yeah, they just had uh, they had the majority of them leaking. And I think it's from water chemistry. Okay, and can you just talk? I mean, at a very very high level, though, um, what are the water treatment options that that are out there that people should be looking at? So um, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, yeah. Us as a mechanical contractor, we do not dabble in chemistry yeah. very much. Sure. Because, sure. Um, but, you know, I would I always um, suggest to my customers and the end users to reach out to a proper chemistry company yeah. and right. have yes. that, you know, daily logs, proper blowdowns. Um, and just make sure that your chemical, uh, you know, is on point because it does not take long to foul boiler out. And I think that the message there is to ask the experts and don't just assume or, you know, or think that you're fine, you know, because and I think one of the things that I understand this to be, and Paul, you can talk to this, is that a lot of the boiler issues that you guys run into in the field are not because of one time things. It's because of things that build over time. Am I right about that, Paul? Yeah, that's exactly right. So as Brandon was saying, along with the with the water chemistry, um, when boilers, burners are fired, then uh, there's some some um, there's some some heat or the heat that's being generated. So there's going to be some thermal shock that's happening there. OK, so during that thermal shock, the tubes are taking a beating during that time. And if the chemistry is off, then the, now what we have is we have scaling on the tubes themselves. Right. So once we have scaling on the tubes themselves and that's where they can start pitting or if there's or if there happens to be, you know, the pitting also comes from. Uh, oxygen being in the water. Mm -hmm. uh, so part of a boiler and how it operates, we are getting rid of the, you know, the water that's being put in it. If it's being put in it straight out of the city, out of the city tap, so to speak, right. it's not yeah. being scavenged of oxygen. So right. if oxygen is being uh, put into into the boiler via the water. Uh, that's also going to. Um, going to make pitting on the on the tubes as well and that's going sure. to give uh or it's going to have premature failures on the tubes so yeah. one more question that i have and i'm not, I, I this is something that i really don't know but like i know that they plug tubes as well and it, it, and i'm assuming that's like a temporary thing um but why do you plug a tube and then uh, by by plugging the tube aren't you also impacting the efficiency still or is or it does it not really matter because there's something wrong with the tube and it has to be something has to be done to it. Either of you want to talk about plugging a tube and and how you guys feel about it and what it kind of does. Go ahead, Brandon. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we we're, we're in situations sometimes where the customer has minimal downtime and yes. that's where we would use a, a tube plug. Um, as uh, somebody that's been in the boiler industry all his life, I don't particularly like to use plugs. I think the code allows you up to, you can plug up to 10% of your tubes oh, wow. in a boiler okay. and legally run it. Um, from a from an efficiency standpoint and um, from a long-term aspect, it just doesn't make sense to plug a tube. Um, you know, we don't get me wrong, we keep them on a the shelf because we have customers that have very, very minimal downtime um, and their process is very critical. So we may only have to be, we may, we may only open up a boiler for a couple hours, plug the tube, close it and bring them back online. Whereas if we had to make a tube replacement repair, one tube would take, would take a day. So that would take them down for a day. Um, but going back to plug versus replacement, it's always better to replace your tube if you have the amount of downtime. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so, Seanica, do you have another question? Yeah. So, I'm trying to understand now with the project, what is the end result? What are you hoping with all the retubing? What are you expecting to have? I assume more efficiency, but tell us a little more about the end results of the project. That can be either of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, really, the end result is for the for the customer to have to have their boiler back by the time heating season comes. And they don't have to worry about any downtime again. So we're also going to ensure that since we're putting new tubes in it, that their water chemistry is going to be is going to um, is going to be properly maintained. So that's something that that we are already speaking with them about. Mm -hmm. uh, because again, uh, to have you know a half a dozen leaking tubes in a boiler, that tells us that if 
one tube was leaking or six tubes are leaking, all of the tubes in the vessel are in the same condition as those six tubes that were leaking to begin right, with. Right, right. So that's the reason the customer really felt um, that it was their best option to replace all of the tubes rather than uh, five or six that was leaking. Well, and even the I remember when we to, were... Yeah, oh. sorry about uh, The end result, once we get done again, is um, the boiler will be a bit more efficient. Um, but when we did pull those tubes out, the tubes weren't, um, weren't really scaled up real bad. They were pitted. So what's that tell us? Chemistry and oxygen in the water. So it wasn't a scaling issue. It was a pitting issue. Mm. Well, that's actually what I was going to say is that the, I, I, I thought it was very interesting as the tubes were coming out that some of the tubes would come out and they would look, you know, like that they were worn, but not right. bad. And then there'd be a couple where like, I remember pulling out, I remember Paul, you saying, oh, look at this one. This one definitely, you know, has a little bit more issues to it and blah, blah, blah. So, and I guess the, the other thing is, I mean, you can't really see those tubes until you really take them out, you know? Right. Uh, so there's only so much that you can learn from, from just being outside the boiler and kind of doing the analysis. It's really once you get in there and kind of deep dive in that you can really see what's going on and really make full analysis, right? Correct. Yeah. That is true. Yeah, you know, the boilers are set up with handhold plates. Um, they do give you some inspection ports, but it's really hard to see a, a total tube and, and uh, you know, where the damage has occurred. Um, yeah. Going back to the question at hand, you know, I think that our customer and what we're what we're really looking to achieve um, at the end of the project is reliability. Uh, this is a facility that could have a quarter million people in it at any given day. And if they were to lose a boiler uh, during heating season and that um, that particular building becomes cold and you're having to turn a quarter million people away, you know, it, it becomes pretty strenuous. So um, you know, reliability is what, what our customer is looking to gain at the end of this project. Well, and I think the one thing that we kind of glanced over a little bit was the was that that this is a boiler for the heating season. So they had the ability to shut it down and have you guys do the work, which depending on the boiler type, that's not something that, that you know, is available, right? And uh, also, you know, the, you know, some places don't even have backups for some of these, pro you know, and then then you're kind of getting into that. So I think that, you know, it was kind of a unique situation there. Yes, for sure. That is correct. This is not, this is not processed steam. This is uh, uh, heating hot water boiler. So you, yeah, right. you're exactly correct, Scott. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about some of the other work that Valley Boiler does as we wrap up here. Um, besides being out there and retubing an entire boiler, which I'm sure you're not doing every day, you know, to, to tell uh, our audience what else you guys are doing in the field. Yeah, so um, we're we uh, we are Victory Energy reps. Uh, we we um, we sell a full line of uh, boiler room equipment um, from the boiler to the burners to the um, to the controls to DA tanks. Um, we also we have large mechanical groups that are out uh, currently out right now in the Carolinas. Um, you know, demoing out um, boiler rooms that have large, large water tube boilers in it. And we're actually going back and replacing them with fire tube systems. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you know, um, we do uh, we do code repairs. Um, yeah. And anything that has to do with the boiler room, I'll let Paul kind of touch in on some of the controls and stuff that we work on. But but yeah, we um, we're, we're full. We're a full blown uh, boiler shop. We have a parts department. We have a large parts department. Um, and um, yeah, anything boiler related. That's what, that's all I know. So yeah, that's what makes, <laughs> that's our, that's what makes know. our relationship so good between me and Paul, you know, I'm the boiler guy and he's the, uh, he's the burner guy. So I let yeah. him speak on the burner and the controls a little bit as well. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah. Uh, as Brandon was saying, uh, you know, Valley is, is the victory rep and yeah. Us as a group, we're also um, we're the rep for auto flame uh, auto flame controls. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also a rep for Limpsfield Burners. Uh, mm -hmm. Both of these companies located over in the UK. Um, so, not only are we working just on you know retubes and boilers and mechanical stuff, but what also comes in with a whole boiler room retrofit or a boiler room upgrade is burners and controls. Uh, yeah. And the whole idea, really what all the whole industry is pushing for right now is uh, a more efficient boiler room. 
And so that's, that's right. not doesn't happen only with the boiler, but that also happens with the controls that you're putting on there, with the burners you're putting on there. Yeah. And we like to think that the companies that we're dealing with are the best in the industry and offer the best products. That's the reason that we've partnered with these with these companies, such as Auto Flame and Limpfield and Victory Energy. Uh, we all have the same mindset where we want to. I don't know. I guess we want to make we want to impact the industry a little bit. We want to. Um, bring our savvy our, to, uh, to our to our our area that we all work in, whether it's yeah. here in Virginia or whether it's down in North Carolina or it's another group that's working somewhere in Texas or off in California or wherever it is. All of us are partnered up together um, because we all think the same pretty much. We're all, this is what we do. This is what we do for a living. It's what we've done our whole lives. Yeah. Um, it's what we eat and breathe every single day. Right. Right. And, and the reason why I wanted you to share that is because I think that people need to understand how this whole process works. Right. And that that, you know, you guys are a victory rep. Um, but if somebody is looking to purchase a boiler to, to have some kind of maintenance issue on a boiler, you know, they're going to come to you guys, especially like if they're into, if looking at like doing a retrofit. You're the conduit between the manufacturer and the and the end user and that you're the one that, that in your region would be the person to contact. And I just wanted to make sure that, that, that everybody. Yeah, that's exactly right. And we have sales guys that are running around that are promoting the products for sure. us. You know, it's not just yep. me and Brandon out there running around and trying to promote our products. We, you know, we have a sales, we have a sales team that's out there pr promoting all of these products and our services. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Well, before we go, I just wanted to, uh, just mention, I have a little hat on here. Uh, I don't know where I got it from. It looks really similar to the one that uh, that Brandon, Brandon's wearing. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we we really appreciate you guys hosting us and uh, joining ABMA. You know, the representative network of the boiler industry is a key component uh, to to our success. And we, we we love having you guys on board, and we're looking forward to having more interactions with you and possibly go into more projects. Shaunika, do you have anything else that you want to share before we wrap up here? Um, I was just going to mention, I think the one thing that stuck out to me the most during the project was when you guys mentioned how heavy those tubes are. You mentioned they were 80 pounds per tube and you're saying there's 254 tubes. That's over 20,000 pounds. So that's correct. That's and that, you know what, you know, what's that's funny that you brought that up because the, um, the scrap, People just came and picked up that dumpster today. No and way. In, and it weighed 19,200 pounds. Wow. That's how much the board wow. weighed. No yeah. one's going wow. to the gym that day. After no. <laughs> no need. No one needs to go to the gym when you're yeah. removing 19,000 pounds of steel out of a boiler. That's but, crazy. But as you mentioned, though, even the, the, the process of taking out the tubes, we're able to scrap the metal and move it on to somewhere else and somebody else who could use it. So That's exactly what happened with it. Yeah, yeah, it's all recycled. Yeah, none of this. So I think that's something else that's important to bring up is, you know, during this process, we're not taking this this steel that we're removing out of the boiler, which is the tubes and and chunking it off into the into the landfill. It's actually going to a scrapyard that's being recycled and it'll be repurposed again. Perfect. Awesome. Well, I am so glad we had that opportunity. Thank you for inviting us down to do that. And we learned so much and it was a really cool project to see. Well, now that we know that you guys are just up the road, when we, uh, you know, when we get a, a burner job, we'll we'll bring you down so you guys can see some live fire and with some nice yeah. burners and auto flame controls. Awesome! Yeah. Well, we're excited. One last thing. I was going to say one last thing, Brandon. So tell people where they can find you guys. Yeah. So we're on LinkedIn, uh, Valley Boiler Mechanical, and E. McLaughlin and Sons. LinkedIn, uh, Valley Boiler Mechanical is on Facebook. Um, and, um, you know, the internet, we have a website. So if, uh, y'all need anything or, you know, anybody that needs anything, tell them to reach out. All no right. Word. Well, well, thanks for joining us for this episode. <laughs> Stay tuned for more episodes and visit abma.com for more details or check out all our social pages because Seanica posts like seven times a day. So I'm sure that you'll see something from us. All right. All right. Well, thanks <laughs> Thank so much. Guys. Guys. Take care. Thank you guys. Thanks, Bye.